Pompeii victim wasn't crushed. New evidence has been unearthed in the case of history's unluckiest man. Archaeologists searching the site of a man believed to have been crushed by a stone block during the Mount Vesuvius eruption in 79 AD have found the rest of his remains. They found the other remains buried deeper below the man's lower body in a tunnel created several hundred years ago. They recovered his thorax, upper limb, and skull. Analysis of the remains revealed they belonged to a 30-year-old man with a limp. Archaeologists now believe the man's death was brought about by pyroclastic asphyxiation, resulting from the eruption. Researchers say more analysis needs to be performed on the bones in order to get a better picture of the man's final moments. Archaeology ain't dig dug. How to put on a 13-ton stone hat. That's a nice looking hat. Where'd you get that? Researchers say they figured out how Easter Islanders transported 13-ton stone hats across the island and placed them on top of 33 feet tall Moai statues. The study, published in the Journal of Archaeological Science, examined how ancient islanders were able to move the additional red stone cylinders, pukau, on tops of the statues. According to NPR, Easter Island has almost 1,000 Moai statues spread across the island, with around 100 of them wearing the pukau hats. After constructing 3D models of the stone cylinders, scientists closely analyzed the details and features of each pukau. They developed a hypothesis that the hats were rolled up to the top of the statues using long ramps with a technique known as par buckling. Using the 3D models, the team was able to calculate how long the ramp would have to be, in addition to how many workers would be required to pull the pukau into place. With a ramp 75 to 328 feet long, with an incline of 5 to 20 degrees, a team of 15 people could maneuver a pukau into position. A massacre? This will get demonetized for sure. This is Sand Biborg. A millennia ago, it was a thriving coastal village, but new evidence shows all inhabitants, every man, woman, and child, were massacred by forces unknown. The Guardian writes that, to this day, locals consider it a dark and dangerous place. They warned researchers to stay away, but they dug it up anyway. Research published in the journal Antiquity details a 1,500-year-old attack on the Ringfort village of Sandby Borg and on the southeastern Swedish island of Åland. To date, three of 53 houses have been excavated and the remains of 26 people have been found, including children. One of these contained nine bodies. Those remains included mostly adults, three children, and an infant that were found inside. They were believed to have been slaughtered by raiders or a fire. Elsewhere on the site shows evidence of an elderly man who had fallen over a central fireplace. Researchers say he was unconscious or dead when he fell. There's 50 houses to go and more than likely more remains to be found. Researchers found a plethora of weaponry including swords, spears, and shields, as well as Roman currency and items. This part of Sweden was never part of the Roman Empire but was influenced by it. The study writes the massacre occurred during a period of great unrest and migration after the fall of the Roman Empire, and it wasn't just people who got maimed. The remains of various animals, a horse, sheep, and a dog were also found on the site. Researchers say that those responsible for the events at the site may have been trying to establish themselves as a new local ruling elite. So whatever went down was not an act of plunder, but more likely a show of force in the form of a calculated, brutal slaughter. What makes the discovery so haunting, as The Guardian reports, is that no one came back to bury or loot the dead. They were just left to rot. And there's still so much more to dig up. Scientists have only excavated less than 4% of all homes on the ancient site, and there's no telling what else they'll find. Plague could be older than previously thought. Scientists have unearthed data that changes current thinking on how old the plague is. Research published in the journal Nature Communication describes how scientists found the bacterium Yersinia pestis on the teeth of 3,800-year-old human remains in Samara, Russia. Researchers looked at the remains of nine people. Two of them had the bacteria. Yersinia pestis gave rise to the bubonic plague. The scientists used sequencing to analyze the samples and found that they predate current thinking on the plague's lineage, 3,000 years, by around 1,000 years. That puts it somewhere in the Bronze Age. Ever heard of the Black Death, Tomo sapiens? It's an ancient plague that racked up a body count of over 300 million people. That's what the bacteria they found could lead to back then. Researchers suggest that there was at least two strains of plague lineage floating around at the time. Previously, it was suggested to be one. Definitely a game changer. 
Humans weren't believed to be in the Philippines until 60,000 years ago, but new findings suggest they were there much, much earlier. Excavations in the northern Philippine province of Kalinga have uncovered 57 stone tools and more than 400 animal bones from monitor lizards, deer, turtles, and the now extinct Stegodon. Researchers also found the mostly intact skeleton of an ancient rhino species. 13 of its bones displayed cut marks indicating it had been butchered for food. The remains were dated to 709,000 years ago. Before this, the earliest indicator of human activity in the country was a 67,000-year-old footbone uncovered at Kalau Cave. The ancients who hunted the rhino were likely an archaic human species called Homo erectus that may have arrived from China via Taiwan or Borneo via Palawan. Without solid evidence, however, researchers say the hobbit-like Homo floresiensis from nearby Flores Island may also be a suspect. They plan to continue excavating to hopefully find their culprit and maybe even unlock more ancient human mysteries. Ancient Tombs Discovered in Egypt Egyptian archaeologists have discovered ancient tombs dating back 2,000 years to the 27th dynasty and the Greco-Roman era. Three Ptolemaic tombs were recently uncovered at a dig site in Egypt's Minya province. The tombs are of a different archaeological design to the ones unearthed at the same site in 2015, which were 20 tombs in a series of ancient catacombs. The first tomb features a perpendicular burial shaft engraved in the rock, which leads to a single burial chamber containing four sarcophagi and nine burial holes. The second tomb has a similar shaft but contains two chambers. To the north is the first chamber, with its two sarcophagi and six burial holes, one of which was for a small child. At the end of the shaft is the second, which holds the remains of a wooden coffin. Excavation on the third tomb is still underway. Bones from the other two tombs identified men, women, and children of different ages, suggesting the site was a large city cemetery. Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities announced the discovery on their Facebook page, calling it very important and saying work is underway to reveal more secrets. This is why Roman concrete outperforms our own. Roman concrete is known for being durable, so much so that some structures made of this material have lasted for thousands of years. Modern concrete structures, however, have significantly shorter lifespans. U.S. researchers have recently revealed the secret behind the longevity of Roman concrete. Roman concrete was typically made with a mixture of volcanic ash, rock, and lime. This mortar mixture proved to be well-suited for the construction of harbors and piers. When seawater enters the concrete through tiny cracks, it reacts with the volcanic ash and lime to produce a crystal called tabermorite in a process known as pozzolanic reaction. The tabermorite crystals bind the concrete particles together, strengthening the concrete and increasing its durability. Researchers are currently experimenting with seawater and volcanic rock in order to create a mixture that could be used to build marine structures that are more durable and have longer lifespans.